Hello again, everyone. Dennis Sullivan here. Sports Snippets, Saturday the 1st of February. We are one day away from Super Bowl 54. Here to share with you my insight, plus just really my outlook on the game. We're very close to that game, of course, which will begin right around 6.30 p.m. on Sunday the 2nd of February in Miami, Florida. Teams to be playing in this Super Bowl, the 54th, of course, Super Bowl, will be the Kansas City Chiefs against the San Francisco 49ers. <clears throat> Looking forward to this one, everyone. I will start things off, though, by going to the snippets board, sharing my just my overall outlook on this particular game. We only get one Super Bowl a year, so we got to get ready for it. And if you do wind up seeing this video after the game's played, well, maybe just let me know if I got any of this stuff right. Because <laughs> I'm going to kind of tell you how I see it and let me know how I did and all that good stuff. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you do like the content of this video. Um, as we begin, I mean, we are going into this game. I mean, these are two different styles, <clears throat> completely different teams in terms of style and what they focus on and really how they win games uh, for the most part. I mean, you're looking at a Kansas City team, Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, uh, plenty of star power there with, of course, Patrick Mahomes. <clears throat> arguably the featured player of not just the Super Bowl, but the entire league. He is a superstar, no longer up and coming. He's here, guys. <clears throat> he's here. And he's playing in his first Super Bowl game. Had missed a few games during the regular season with injury, but he is back and he's playing great, is Patrick Mahomes. Uh, this game also features... I'm very confident in this one. The two best tight ends in pro football in Travis Kelsey and, of course, George Kittle for the 49ers, both statistically and just overall. I mean, you know, you'll see them put out some great blocks out there on the field um, and even hear the announcers say, you know, they're, they're not just great receivers. They are outstanding blockers and play the position really well so if you're a big tight end fan I mean, you can't get any better than this just, these are really the two best tight ends in pro football um and most perhaps most important of all it's the flashier kansas city chiefs the through the air, uh, you know, that's their strength. Through the air, through the air focused Kansas City Chiefs against the smash mouth ground and pound. We're going to run it right up the middle and you better stop us. Maybe we'll run it around you too. San Francisco 49ers. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> led by, of course, as well, uh, quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo and their amazing running backs who are outstanding. And, you know, the Niners are a team that can also hurt you through the air, but they are a running focused or running team in general, really. And, and you got you got to stop that run if you think you're going or at least slow it down if you think you're going to have a chance against the 49ers. All right, everyone, so um, item two here on my board, I did just put uh, the name Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes. I mean, and rightfully so. I mean, he is the focal point. If, if you're going to focus just on one player as far as uh, how his performance goes, and I guess you could say, I don't really know if there's extra pressure on him. I mean, it's hard for me to say I've never played in the Super Bowl, <laughs> so I really don't know, guys. I know that I can tell you that Patrick Mahomes, this is his first Super Bowl. I can tell you that. And he's still a very young player, and I would imagine this is not his last Super Bowl either. Um, coach Andy Reid, uh, this is his second Super Bowl as a coach. If you recall, he took the Philadelphia Eagles several years ago to the Super Bowl, uh, only to lose against the New England Patriots. So Coach Andy Reid is tremendous. Has, a tr has had a tremendous career, but he is also, uh, he is in search of his first Super Bowl and has been a tremendous coach in the NFL for many, many years. Um, but if there's one star in this game, uh, going into the game, 
it is definitely Patrick Mahomes. And I'll end uh, item two with this with this particular uh, tidbit or snippet, if you will. I've never seen a quarterback actually throw a no look pass. I mean, it, that that is insane to me. I mean, where he's actually looking and he's throwing a football over the middle, or or you know maybe looking to the right, throwing a football over the middle. An actual quarterback <clears throat> throwing a football no look pass to me is amazing. I mean, no look passes. I mean, that, that's a basketball type term. Basket that happens in basketball games and is uh, by basketball standards is awesome. Wow, that guy threw a no look pass, and here you have Patrick Mahomes. I mean, he doesn't do it all the time, uh, but he does it. I, I've seen I've seen him do it before. How many times during a game? I don't know. My guess would be maybe a couple times. I, I don't know how often he does it, but he does it from time to time. And that I've never seen. You guys may have seen it. I've never seen that. And to me, that is just amazing. For those of you who are not fully, you know, the Super Bowl brings all kinds of fans. It brings the... My team didn't make it, but I'm glued to any football game I can find fan. I'm a huge football fan kind of uh, kind of fan that will watch this game. I mean, that's a lot of a lot of the audience, I would imagine. There's eh, kind of um, fans that are, I hate to say fair weather, but, you know, uh, somewhat sports fans. They can get into it every now and then. They have a favorite team, kind of sort of into it, but they'll watch the game too. And then there's others, and there's nothing wrong with this. They watch one football game a year, and it's the Super Bowl. So, And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, for those fans, especially, you got some, you got, this is the place for TV ads, guys. Super Bowl produces TV ads like no other. I mean, we, you know, over the years, if you look at it, we've had celebrities, you have, uh, you know, giant companies trying to get your attention as a timeout is called or as they go to commercial, um, over and this has been going on for decades tv ads this is the event if you want to see funny or entertaining or just i didn't expect this i didn't expect that television ad so stay tuned for that that is always always a lot of fun guys always a lot of fun now let's move into the breakdown item number four i'm going to take a few minutes here just kind of kind of you know i'm going to give you a little bit of a breakdown of how i see it we're going to talk a little statistics here we are going to uh go a little bit more in depth if you will let's start with the 49ers jimmy garoppolo as we know the quarterback of the, of the 49ers backing up tom brady uh, at the beginning of his career, comes over to the 49ers as their quarterback. There were some troubles with injuries, and, and you know, here and there, he kind of uh, had a little difficulty there getting started, much of which was not his fault, if not uh, all of it really didn't seem to be his fault. But, you know, it was completely new set up for him. He's now on the West Coast. He's in San Francisco. This is a team that was rebuilding at the time, and boy, have they come full circle, have the San Francisco 49ers. Jimmy Garoppolo, although he, especially, I mean, in, in the NFC Championship, they only threw the ball eight times, which is amazing. That's a Pop Warner-like performance. You only, throw, you only throw eight passes? I don't even know. Did they, did they only... <laughs> In Pop Warner today, do they even throw the ball that uh, few amount of times? Only eight. But uh, he still, one thing to keep in mind about Jimmy Garoppolo, he can hurt teams. He has had big games during the 2019 season into 2020. So that is something that we need to keep in mind. He did complete close to 70% of his passes. Also, uh, 28 touchdown passes for Garoppolo, only 14 interceptions, not too bad. Including the playoffs, he did throw for a little bit over 4,000 yards. So the statistics don't jump out at you. However, complete percentage of just under, he's at 68.8%. That's really good, actually. So he is very efficient. Where you're going to see the Niners really 
you know, show their muscle and talent is in the running game. They have a th- that's a three-headed monster back there in the backfield with Raheem Mostart, um, uh, Mostart, excuse me, Tevin Coleman. We remember him from the Falcons, and of course uh, Matt Breida. Um, Raheem Mostert, that over a thousand yards on the season, uh, five, he's, he's right at uh, almost six yards a carry, 5.9 yards a carry, 12 touchdowns. Tevin Coleman at 670 yards rushing and eight touchdowns. So between those two players, they're at 20 rushing touchdowns. Matt Breida had a very good year too for the 49ers, 642 yards. A 4.9 average and a touchdown. All three of those players averaging over four yards a carry. Coleman, 4.1. Brita, 4.9. Mustard at almost six, 5.9 yards a carry. Outstanding. Even Debo Samuels chipped in with a little over 208 yards rushing during the season and three touchdowns. And he's a wide receiver. So they will find ways to beat you on the ground. I mean, you look at those four players, they're at 24. Rushing touchdowns, that's a loss. Um, George Kittle, the tight end, led the 49ers in receiving during the season with 1,088 yards on 89 catches and five touchdowns. Debo Samuel, the young player and up, up and coming star, it really seems, 890 yards receiving, 62 receptions, three touchdowns. Manuel Sanders caught 38 passes during the season, 535 yards and three touchdowns. Kendrick Bourne also contributed 34 catches during the season, 404 yards, and he did have six receptions that were touchdowns. So he caught six touchdown uh, passes during the regular season. Pretty impressive. For the Chiefs, I mean, they're a well-rounded team as well. It begins and ends, of course, with Patrick Mahomes. He did miss a few games, as you may recall, during the regular season due to injury, but still winds up throwing for a little over 4,600 yards, 4,646 yards, 34 touchdowns, only five interceptions. He himself also completes a very high percentage of his passes, 65.9%. The Chiefs also, an underrated thing about the Chiefs, though, I mean, they do have two good running backs. I mean, you have Damian Williams. Remember him when he used to play for the Dolphins? Um, he's a, he's one of those running backs, like he'll hurt you in the air too. He's a good receiver as well. Um, 590 rushing, uh, yards during the season. Not bad. And he ran for eight scores. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. A little bit of a cough all of a sudden. Eight scores, 4.2 average on the ground for Damian Williams. LaShawn McCoy. We remember him. 465 yards. Four touchdowns rushing and a 4.6 average. I'll say this. I'll say this, guys. Um, LaShawn McCoy, that could be like one of the wild card players. I mean, he kind of come out of nowhere and make some big plays for the Chiefs. I can see him being a factor in this game. You never know, though. You never know. Let's just see what happens. Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes himself, would run for 324 yards during the season and three touchdowns. Um, On the receiving end of things, just like the 49ers, the Chiefs' leading receiver is their tight end. As stated earlier, these really, this is the battle of the tight ends. Travis Kelsey uh, would catch 110 passes during the regular season for 1,393 yards and eight touchdowns. Tyreek Hill, 66 catches. 968 yards and nine touchdowns, and there's more, guys. This Chiefs team just spreads the ball out in the area of Sammy Watkins. 61 catches, 863 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, McCole Hardman, 565 yards receiving, six touchdowns on 29 catches. Demarcus Robinson, 484 yards, four touchdowns during the season on 35 catches. Damian Williams, as mentioned before, a nice receiver out of the backfield, would catch 37 passes during the season for 278 yards and three receiving touchdowns. That's a lot. I mean, they really they really spread that ball out to about six players on a regular basis. And there's more, too, that, I, you know, you look at the list of receiving on the Chiefs, and this is a big list, guys. I mean, there's 
there's other players too. This is their top, I just listed for you, their top six receivers during the season. So they can certainly um, cause a lot of, lot of problems uh, through the air. Now the 49ers, of course, are known for playing very good defense. A running team primarily in the 49ers against a more wide open passing team <coughs> in the excuse me in the um, Kansas City Chiefs. So we do have a little bit different styles there, of course. But I tell you what, this is a great matchup, and I'll say this um, before I wrap things up here. This is a football fans game, meaning if you like just like watching football for the coaches out there, for those that are involved at uh, anywhere from the Pop Warner level in coaching to high school to the college ranks and pro. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of pro football coaches watching this game. Very interested to see how it goes. This is a football fans game. It really is. Um, if you're one who likes to watch football and has done so for, for many years, you look at this game as a very interesting matchup. Um, one last thing, uh, leading tacklers for the Niners during the season was Mr. Fred Warner had 95 tackles. These are solo tackles. I just took, a, a, looked at the leaders to kind of, um, put out some names. I mean, there are other statistics, of course, which I won't get into like interceptions and sacks and things of that nature, but Fred Warner, um, did have 95 solo tack tackles during the season, which is outstanding for the San Francisco 49ers. Dre Greenlaw had 70 solo tackles for the Chiefs. We had... Damian Wilson, 63 solo tackles. Charvarius Ward would have 60 solo tackles. And don't forget, Terrell Suggs is now on the Kansas City Chiefs defense. Great pickup for them. And he comes uh, from the Arizona Cardinals, who he was playing at earlier in the season, for a lot of the season, most of the season. And then prior to that, of course, he played for the Baltimore Ravens for a long, long time. He played for the Ravens, I think, for about 15 years, if I'm not mistaken. So Terrell Suggs offering that veteran uh, leadership, and they focus in on him when he's out there sometimes, you know. Very well-known player and a great pickup for the Chiefs. Leading me to the final point, guys, my vibe on this game. So here we go. I'm going to say this. This is a tough one. Now, you look at, like, the point spread, for example. I mean, I don't always go by that, but uh, I was thinking to myself, it's got to be very close to even, and it is. Uh, the app I went on this morning shows the Chiefs as a slight, slight, slight favorites of only about a point and a half. Actually, it was a point and a half favorites this morning. That can always, of course, uh, sway one way or another. Um, not sure if that is the same one and a half point, uh, number that you're going to see on every app. I can't say for sure, but the one that I looked at, uh, the source that I looked at, I should say it was a one and a half point, uh, favorite were the Kansas city chiefs. I'm going to say this something. And usually when we have the more wide open offensive team against the running defensive team and that offensive wide open team has really the best player on the field which will be the case on Sunday usually I'm going to go for that passing offensive team most of the time but this time I'm not going to do that something's telling me the San Francisco 49ers are going to just figure this out and get the win in the Super Bowl. Something is telling me. It's more of a hunch. Um, historically, again, you know, four or five times, I would pick a team like the Chiefs. I'm not going to do that this time. And again, this is just my own vibe, really, that I do think that the 49ers will figure this out. They have a lot of answers. They have, they have, you know, whenever I see a team with three good running backs, I mean, that kind of, that, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty significant in my humble opinion. So guys, it was great talking to you about well, just a little, some information I'm sharing, a little bit of a breakdown and a little vibe of mine here on the Super Bowl that will be played on the 2nd of February 2020. So that's 2 2 20. 
will be the Super Bowl. Interesting. Wow. Two, two of 20. A lot of twos there. Will be the Super Bowl. So if you're um, watching this a little bit later on Saturday night or during the day on Sunday, feel free to uh, go ahead and make a comment. Let me know who you think is going to win. Do you think it's going to be the 49ers or maybe you want to pick the Chiefs? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know what you think is going to happen. If you're watching this video and the Super Bowl is already being played, uh, let me know if I got any of this stuff right. And uh, I'll see you soon. I will see you soon. Should be a cool day in Miami tomorrow. Highs in the upper 60s, actually. It looks like a high of about somewhere in the 69 to 70 degree range, and that's about it. So uh, I will see you soon, Dennis Sullivan Sports Snippets. Until next time, and enjoy the Super Bowl.